a future Nikola Tesla. And tell us your name and what you do for a living. Hi, uh, I'm Maxwell Lawhon, uh, and I am a physicist, inventor, entrepreneur, and well, I guess change maker. Uh, I'm 13, and I feel like I can change the world, and I've already started my positive impact on it. What have you done? How have you changed the world so far? So aside from inventing uh, a whole bunch of different stuff that probably won't matter now, but my most recent thing, which has gotten me a little bit of attention online, is my energy device, where I extract electromagnetic energy from everything around us and convert it into electrical energy. In other words, a stream of unlimited energy. So, you know. So, do you think you can solve our energy crisis here on planet Earth? I believe I, I will, and I believe I already have solved the main problem. Now it's just a, a matter of, you know, getting this out there. And what do you need to be able to get this out there? You just need somebody to watch this video and say, here's some money, or what do you need? Well, all I can think of really is support, you know. Throughout history, uh, people like me have been uh, prosecuted and killed, murdered, um, and a lot of other very horrible things. And if I have support from a lot of people, I don't think that... Um, that will happen in our modern day and age. We're a little bit too civilized for that. So all I'm saying is that if you think the world should be a better place too, then, you know, just support. Okay. So we started off by talking about my book, E equals MC squared and the new definition of God. And you told me that you had already come to the same conclusion three years ago. And yes. that my book was a dumbed down version of your theory, which I think it's clearly the case. What is God? So, um, Okay. Yeah, so the, and people walking around down in the basement here. Go yeah. ahead. What what is what is God? Okay, so uh, a lot of people think God is quite in the biblical sense a guy sitting up on a cloud who controls uh, the universe, frankly, and has created all life. But uh, my definition of God is not like that. I don't believe God is a person or entity. Uh, God is just another form of energy. Well, actually is energy. Himself, well not even himself, itself. For the fact that um, you look at the Bible and other really, you know, awesome but extremely vague and unreliable unre sources in religion uh, that you know, hold these sources that we find and facts that we find, or so-called facts that we find, and really a lot of people think it's just about faith, um, but if you relate the Bible to quantum physics and apply most of the laws, actually, in not less of a figure sen figurative sense, but more of a literal sense, and replace it with things like the universe, uh, you'll, you'll eventually find out that it explains in-depth quantum physics, quantum physics and astrophysics um, experiments and theories, well, maybe not theories because maybe now they're proven. Who knows, maybe the Bible isn't a story of something that happened on Earth, but maybe a story of how our universe began. For the fact that, honestly, I don't really buy into the literal biblical sense, like, you know, God is literally a guy who looks like us, who sits up in an alternate realm that's in our clouds and, you know, watches over all of us, but I guess you could say that he's an energy form that created all, is all, and is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. God, or energy, lives within us, through us, and can... And is us. And is us, frankly. So you said what, that God is the energy that is in us, created us, and is us. Is that, yes. is that your definition? Yep. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Sort of, yeah. God is energy. That's my thing. And I mean, like, you look at dimensional theory, and eventually we have, you know, a singularity at the beginning of the universe that is energy. And then, you know, eventually that begins to slow down in vibration due to entropy or some other law of that sort. And then, you know, first you get photonic light, and then that slows down, and then we get matter, and then that slows down. And then who else knows what comes next? We have gravity, and then we have time, you know, all coming in at one sense. And I mean, does that sound like origin story to you? It kind of does a little bit to me. But, you know, maybe that's just a coincidence. Uh, maybe... These philosophers, or unreliable monks we call them, that lived up in the mountains and wrote this weird book that doesn't have any factual evidence behind it, maybe they were quantum physicists 
ahead of their time and maybe they're just trying to tell people you know who lived a crazy long time ago that there is an entire new quantum world out there but you know education wasn't too good back then so I guess they had to simplify intense quantum physics to something that a five-year-old can understand Thus they- the Bible right <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying people who believe in the Bible as written, as the Bible, conventionally, are kind of like five-year-olds? Um, well, 500 years ago, no, sorry, a thousand years ago, probably, but um, more of like, I'm saying, maybe in the sense of not really, like, I honestly don't want to insult anybody, but all to real life. So, um, just saying that it's a coincidence. It's not fact. I'm not saying anything's anything. You know, I have a very religious grandmother, so, you know. I have to tell you, I, I, I let you kind of struggle with this, because I realized the question was a little bit, perhaps, impolite to some people. And the way you handled that was a way that my political and business clients, if they did it as well as you, I'd be incredibly proud. So the bottom line is that we keep evolving, right? And the Bible was written in different ways to interpret it. Now you said something about the Bible and using the letters going backwards in the Fibonacci theory. Can you explain that? Because that's amazing. In certain parts of the Bible, you can get literally, if you convert the letters to numbers, Speak a little louder if you the can. Uh, Fibonacci sequence, if you invert, of course. Um, but in certain important parts of the book, you'll take certain parts out and you'll get uh, numbers, which seem random, but they're actually frequencies of resonance that line up with what's called the Fibonacci spiral. And the Fibonacci spiral is kind of weird for the fact that it's called literally God's thumbprint. Which is a little bit weird, considering that we have spiral galaxies, spirals on our thumbs, spirals in our ears. Literally, almost every organism on the planet or object we have found has had some sort of reminisce of Fibonacci in it. And I don't know, it's called God's trademark or God's thumbprint, but um, I don't know. It's so, a coincidence, I guess. So if you're the reincarnation of anyone, who do you think it would be or who would you like it to be? I honestly think that I'm Max Lawhon, and that's who I am. So I'm gonna say Max Lawhon. <laughs> but uh, I'm very proud of and um, a f- quite a big fan of Nikola Tesla. I mean, I'd like to be the reincarnation of him, but honestly, I think I'm just a student of his many teachings. That's amazing. What's the favorite thing that he has invented or theorized about for you? Honestly, uh, I really like his work with uh, electrostatic pulses when he harnessed uh, Tesla coil powers and used it to wirelessly transfer energy through people, around people, and how he could like light himself on fire but not be hurt by it, and that was pretty crazy. Um, so I, I really like that. That's very cool. So just a couple more questions. You're, you're extraordinarily inspiring. And I agree with you on your definition of God and wrote a children's book that basically says that. But you then, before when we were talking, we were talking about infinity and different universes. And so we've kind of identified God. God is energy, right? All the energy in the universe, that's God. It's not a guy in the sky. It's energy. Energy isn't something that you just have. Energy is all and, and can't be. Not all the energy in the universe, it's energy. Energy happens to consume the entire universe and every other parallel dimension or universe that can ever exist in our dimensional reality, but... Are there other universes, are, and yes. are there other dimensional realities? Uh, dimensional realities? I'm not sure if we can prove that yet, but we do know that there, are other, that there are other dimensions. Okay, how do you know that? Well, there's an infinite number of numbers, which means there's an infinite number of frequencies that we can calculate. And if there's an infinite number of frequencies that we can calculate, that means there's an infinite number of frequencies that uh, mass can take. And if mass can take an infinite number of frequencies, there must be an infinite number of dimensions. Or if you're one of those string theory guys, there's 10. Or if you're an M theory guy, you say it's 11 dimensions. But as of right now, 
I'm beginning to question string theory and M theory for the fact that I believe that there are more, I mean, mathematical dimensions. Yes, I'm actually quite aware of that. But then again, if imagine we're looking at this from a fourth dimensional perspective, we can always go up one dimension from there. We can't say that there's a limitation. In other words, we know that there's dimensions below us, but we've never even gone into negative dimensions even. And to even contemplate the fact that if we were at the top of the dimensional scale, there'll have to be something above us. In other words, if you're at a top of a dimensional scale, we have to have some sort of limitations, right? Everything does. And if that has limitations, then it opens up an entire new set of dimensions. And then, you know, what happens when they're at the top, and then they're at the top, and continuing on and on forever, I guess. Are there multiple universes, or is this the oh, yes. only universe? Mm -hmm. Yes, every time uh, an electron moves an atometer, or less than an atometer, a millionth, a 100 millionth, an infinite Googleplex of an atometer around um, uh, a, nucleus. An, a, a nucleus, or uh, maybe just floating around in the universe. Anytime anything moves any bit, you're shot into an infinite number of parallel universes in which can happen. And, and so we're somewhere infinite down the line right now from the original universe, constantly shifting closer and farther away from it. So, yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. So Brian Greene, the famous physicist who wrote the, ne the Elegant Universe, said that the universe, that, that what reality was, was infinite universes expanding infinitely. Do you agree with that? Yeah. And if, in fact, there are infinite dimensions and infinite universes, is it possible that someone named Max and someone named Richard are having this very same conversation in some other dimension? Probably. There's an alternate universe, probably, where we're having this conversation one one millionth of a second after we started this conversation. So, yeah, I'm probably guessing Why not simultaneously? There. Well, I suppose something has to be different. Maybe that person walking over there wouldn't be walking, or maybe he's walking one millionth of a second faster than he would in the other universe. So what so, happens after we die? I don't know. Our bodies rot in the ground. The end. But do we continue in some way? Is there reincarnation? Well, we have, um, we know that we obtain consciousness, or, you know, I think, therefore I am, right? Well, we must have some sort of energy force to do that. Some people say it's neurons, but if you look at consciousness more, we understand that it really is an energy. And energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred from form to form. So it's, I guess, some sort of, has some feasibility to it, but I don't know. So, last question. If you could do anything or be anything in this lifetime, what would you do and or be? I just want to invent a better future. I don't care if I get money or credit or whatever other people want for some reason. Um, all I'm looking at is to make the world a better place, to advance it, to bring the future just a tiny bit closer to today. Um, so, I think that I am really just want to invent and maybe educate a little bit. Maybe um, just make the world a better place as much as I can. And I believe I can do that through technology. So. Thank you. And you're how old? Oh, I'm 13. When are you going to be 14? Um, in about nine months. So. Cool. Oh, is it nine months? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I can't believe I've stumped you on this. Seven You've months. answered all of the questions about quantum physics and the universe. Seven months. Anyway, you're an amazing young man. It's been an honor to talk to you right here at the United Nations in front of the United Nations Bookshop. And um, keep on contributing your incredible, unique genius to the world. You have inspired me and the people watching this and many. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for letting me talk. Take care. Peace out. Oh, peace, peace out.